Okay, so when you're ready, you can come back into the Zoom meeting. I'd like to welcome Alberto from Canada. Right now he has his hand over his picture, but uh, he's come to check me out because he's thinking of coming to India. So it'd be very nice. Okay. So would somebody like to share what happened for them in the meditation? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, yeah, the meditation, it took, there were some thoughts there. And after some while, I was really deep inside. And my body felt like, not alive anymore. Um, like it, I had the feeling I couldn't move the hands, but I could. But yeah, it's like it's just a body. And, um, and also, when you said open your eyes, I was like, oh no, <laughs> I don't want to stay in this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. fields and uh, yeah. All right, very good. Yeah, nice. Okay, anybody else like to offer some experience from the meditation? Okay, so tonight uh, we're going to continue with the last chapter from this book, <clears throat> The Pointless Joy of Freedom. So this book is divided up into seven chapters, and um, it was a project for about two years. So over the course of this two years in our um, kind of public live meetings in, uh, in the Open Sky House, we um, I would choose um, particular teachers. You can find them on the back of the book, different teachers who had touched my life. And I selected <clears throat> some quotations from them. So each evening I would give the quotation and then I would talk about that quotation from my point of view. And so tonight we've got to the seventh chakra, the seventh chapter which of course is all about the self. So this is actually the most touching and interesting chapter, I would say. So the self is everything and the self is nothing. The self is complete. There is just divine playfulness, a whole life transformed because you are no longer looking for something. You now you know you have everything, and all desire simply falls away. There is a tremendous contentment, peace, and a great relaxation. <clears throat> In my own case, I had been searching for around 15 years and maybe I made some small progresses and then I I came to Papaji and he had this tremendous power to be a catalyst and I asked him three questions in the first three weeks and in the case of the last question something popped and it was amazing because immediately all searching disappeared. So my last moment was asking this question, then something very strong happened. And then the next day waking up, uh, I experienced um, a sort of something new, something different, something I didn't really recognize. And I noticed that I had lost all interest in searching. It just completely disappeared after 15 years. 
and then there was some kind of strong um, energetic phenomena that started immediately and continued for a whole month. Um, yeah, and all interest to ask a question disappeared. After a week, I gave a little report to Papaji, and his response to my report was, you're not a farmer, there's nothing to cultivate. You're not a farmer, there's nothing to cultivate. So actually, I, I, I would say I have been doing a bit of cultivation, in fact. But um, yeah, this this feeling of searching has never never came back, never came back. <clears throat> a moment of self-realization happens, and in a split second, it becomes crystal clear there never was any separation. We have always been the truth that we were so deeply yearning and longing for and devoting our lives to finding it. It's already inside us. In fact, it is us. We are not separate from anything. I mean, this is uh, something very, very touching, of course, because we also tend to project uh, great things for this moment. Something very fantastic will happen. Uh, when, it, when it really happens, many people laugh a lot, uncontrollably laughing, because somehow they see the joke that, in my case, for 15 years, I was actively searching I was actively doing all kind of spiritual stuff that was supposed to bring me to the seventh chakra. And uh, maybe it did, maybe it all helped, but actually it was just a certain moment of recognition. So simple. And everybody on the screen tonight, right now, is completely capable of that. It's just a recognition that you are not who you thought you were. You are not all the um, conditionings, all the ideas, all the philosophies. You're not nothing, none of that. You're not even your experiences. Experiences come, experiences go. And in fact, all you are is this moment, this moment now. If you can accept that, then you're free. With this understanding, we live our lives knowing that this moment is all we have. And the great divine play of existence just unfolds by itself from moment to moment. The burdens of the mind and the chains of our conditioning have been seen to be false, and we are realized living in our true nature. Okay, the first quote that I selected was from Deepak Chopra, which uh, we've talked about before. He's uh, maybe the most distinguished um, spiritual teacher. Um, and um, there's a very beautiful quotation here. He's saying, according to Vedanta, there are only two symptoms of enlightenment, just two indications that a transformation is taking place within you towards a higher consciousness. The right. first symptom is that you stop worrying. Things don't bother you anymore. You become lighthearted and full of joy. The second symptom is that you encounter more and more meaningful coincidences in your life. 
more and more synchronicities. And this accelerates to the point where you experience the miraculous. A very beautiful quotation. I hope I can find, yeah. Yeah. So um, without bringing any judgment, identification and expectations to every situation, we find that nothing is a problem. No one is a threat. Who is there to feel threatened or anxious? Each moment is a clean slate. So this is a very, very beautiful way to live. Just let go of the old nonsense. Just let go. We have several people in our community who occasionally have glimpses and then they grab again their old nonsense. It's like an addiction, addicted to the old nonsense. We don't need it anymore. It's all past. I've had the opportunity to spend quality time with many awakened Indian masters, initially through interviews for a book I called Blueprints for Awakening. A lot of them were seeing and dealing with many people and had the various pressures that go with that. But one of the qualities I could feel with almost all these people was a brightness in their expression of life. Despite the pressures, they were very relaxed and happy, open to and resting in the moment, dealing with the situation as they arose. It's very beautiful to spend time with these kind of characters because you can experience in the way they deal with the people around them and with the situations that maybe pressurize them if they're running the ashram, how easily they just deal with everything. And when they deal with it, you, you feel that's, that's it. It's been dealt with, it's finished. So that there's a tremendous, a tremendous feeling of the next thing, the next thing, which existence turns up with, whatever it is. But there's no, no older law. We don't need to have a bag on our back in which we keep all this old nonsense. It's gone. It's gone. And as soon as you see this very, very clearly, you would never have a reason again to grab at this old stuff. It's so beautiful to be present. It's so amazing. When you really know the self, then you live knowing I am the self and a tremendous playfulness comes. You are happy to be alone and just as happy to run a busy ashram. You can pay the electric bill or sit in meditation. The self is everything and the self is nothing. The self is complete. Anybody like to comment on this uh, first quotation from uh, Deepak Chopra? So I think it's true that in the community, there are many residents who have had at least a glimpse of the self. And you all know once you've had a glimpse, you know on some level what is really possible. So then there's no reason to hold on to the past. It doesn't make any sense to hold on to the past.
<clears throat> okay, so now we have a quote from Mr. Eckert. He's a kind of interesting man. We haven't talked about him. He's actually a Christian mystic. And he was from the Dominique Dominican uh, order. In, uh, he was born in 1260 until 1328. So that's uh, what, uh, 600 years ago, roughly. 600 years ago. And uh, he founded his own group. He called it Friends of God. Friends of God. We're all friends of God. Friends of God. Outside, it was outside the church. In, he liked to be very independent. And of course, he was speaking like a mystic. So that really didn't go down well in the Christian church. And in fact, the Pope accused him of being a heretic. And uh, he died during his court case. So before he, they could tell him that he was guilty, he died. So... Uh, but anyway, he was a very interesting guy because you don't find so many Christians who can step out of the clutches of the church. So his quote is a little bit different from our Indian quotes. For the person who has learned to let go and let be, nothing can ever get in the way again. There exists only the present instance. There is no yesterday, nor any tomorrow, but only now. So this was definitely was you know terrible for the Pope to hear that, of course. Anyway. So self-realization is a particular moment when the attachment to the thoughts is cut. And this is, of course, very beautiful because it puts you completely in the hands of the divine. From that moment, your life will continue to flow and you will find that it is not the mind deciding. It is not you deciding, but rather divine revealing your destiny from moment to moment. This is just uh, so wonderful, you see, that you can actually live not with your mind deciding, you can actually live in a deep surrender to this moment. And this moment will lead to another moment and another moment. And the divine decides, the divine decides, you see. There are no special pieces of a jigsaw that you have, have to get from somewhere. You don't have to meet a special truth or special teaching because we are all complete. We are already free. And in fact, our nature is love. Not romantic love, of course, but authentic love unconditional love so there is nothing to change there is nothing wrong everybody is exactly good enough everybody is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing and everybody exact is exactly where they should be <laughs> So this is this is the very clear statement, yeah. That you're always you're always where you're supposed to be. You're always doing what you're supposed to be doing. And even when you have the idea that you want to do something else, you won't be able to do it unless it's your divine destiny. And you must have experienced, many of you experienced in your life that you have some idea, I'm gonna do blah blah blah. And then all kinds of little things happen. And uh, you see that at the end of the day, you see, well, actually, I never got to do what I planned to do today. Other things happened. Maybe somebody rang the doorbell. It was an old friend. You'd go off and have a lunch together and so on. So you, we don't need to really make many plans. Of course, if you're going to fly from Germany to Spain, 
you have to um, check out the tickets, you have to choose a time, you have to choose the the airport and so on. And so there are certain things which uh, you need to use your mind to um, to organize practical things. These practical things don't cause us much suffering. They just, uh, we just use our intelligence to do what is necessary. And then the unfolding of, of the day, we leave it in the hands of, you can say God. Maybe we call it the divine because God is a bit of a complicated word, but maybe the divine. So today I've, I selected four quotations because um, there are many very good quotations in this chapter. I strongly recommend everybody to read this chapter because this is um, <clears throat> it's really an enormous encouragement to read what different teachers say about this seventh chakra. And so now I have a particularly interesting uh, quotation because it's from uh, Sazen, who was the third Zen patriarch of China. Maybe you remember that Buddha sent Bodhidharma to China. And uh, I remember Osho had a, had a great story about the meeting at the border between the emperor. The emperor had come to the border of China to greet uh, Bodhidharma and he asked uh, Bodhidharma some kind of question I've forgotten what the question was and Bodhidharma's answer was to put his shoe on his head and naturally the the emperor didn't really understand that so uh, anyway so then um, as far as I understand Bodhidharma then found a nice cave and he sat facing the wall of the cave for I don't know, t about 12 years. And in that time, one or two people came to him and asked him to turn around, but he never did. And then finally, there's, there was the second, the second patriarch of China came and asked him to turn and he turned. And then he, in that way, passed on Buddhist teachings. And then the third uh, patriarch is actually very famous and if you look in my um what do we call it um, what's it called um what? blog 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 blog, uh, blog blog yeah i haven't written anything for about two years in my blog but I, there was a spurt of interest some years ago so if you look on my blog i think i've got there the whole of his um, the whole of his teaching. I think I put the whole of his teaching. Um, but anyway, this is one small part. It's the first verse of a much longer teaching. The great way is not difficult for those who are unattacked. No preferences. When love and hate are both absent, everything becomes clear and undisguised. Make the smallest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set indefinitely apart. If you wish to see the truth, then hold no opinion for or against anything. So kind of strong start, but actually this is the kind of strong start that you need to achieve in order for this moment of realization. So read read on my blog the other parts of this because it's it's a very beautiful um, teaching, a very famous teaching. And in the in the Papaji book, um, what, what's it called? The, the one we translated into Spanish. Thus spake Papaji. Thus spake Papaji. In in there, somebody asked him about this teachings and if i remember right he he did a kind of commentary on these teachings 
So that is in the, I think, the back of the um, the book, which is uh, a record of his satsangs. I, it's in German, I think, yeah? Uh, Fire of Freedom, probably, then, yeah. Fire of Freedom, yeah. That's the book, Fire mm -hmm. of Freedom, yeah. Infinite space, black, shining, infinite space. It is not the blackness of death or of dark forces. It is a brilliant, shining blackness, full of light. It is very attractive. You don't have any movement away from this. You can stay there forever and ever. Once you become a little experienced, you can stay there and have your eyes open and move your body and walk around and do some tasks. But in the beginning, you may have to sit, maybe to close your eyes and find this place that never changes. I remember when I was living in Australia, in Sydney, it was about, it was about five years after my strong moment with Papaji. I was in Sydney and um, I had been, um, I'd been teaching meditation. So I had a few students. So I invited them to a, a, a new meeting. I said, this is gonna be called satsang and we're, it's a completely different kind of meeting. So I, we started one afternoon in uh, somebody's apartment in Sydney. I think about six people came and that was my first ever meeting. And then that was in 19, uh, 1997, I think, yeah. I had no idea what was going to happen, but actually very quickly, more and more people came. It's very strange, really, where they come and why they come. And um, in particular, I had a, a friend, well, he was more like an acquaintance who was a yoga teacher. And one afternoon, we were sitting together and we were discussing the possibility of finding a place where I could give my meetings, he would give his yoga. And so we would share, you know, the rent of some kind of place. And then the phone rang. This is the miraculous part. The phone rang, it was a friend of his. And this, this guy had a, had a woman teacher from Taiwan and he'd rented a big building in the middle of Sydney on one, two, on maybe four or five um, different levels. And um, he ran a cleaning business on one level. And um, this his teachers stopped coming to Sydney, so he didn't really need the rest of the building. So we were able to rent like half of it. <clears throat> so we, I started my meetings in this very nice place. And after a short time, he came to me and said, you know, I can't carry on with you because I've come to realize that if anybody has um, a health problem in this building, um, as I'm Australian and you're English, I will have to deal with it. <laughs> and this made him so scary that he disappeared from one moment to the next. So then I was left with the half of the building for me. And... Um, it wasn't very long until we had about 40 people coming to the meetings. It was a kind of phenomena. So that's how things started. And um, somehow it seems to about 27 on 30 years has gone by. And um, I've had a lot of fun, actually, a lot of fun, met many people. OK, so I'm sure now we have some Body who'd like to dialogue.
Maybe somebody who's had a glimpse would like to share how it was for them when they had a glimpse. Lakshmi? Mm -hmm. Ja, hört ihr mich? Okay, hört ihr mich? Ja. Yeah. I had my a very nice glimpse uh, when I was nearly uh, 40 and it came out of the blue in the nature I I, I told you uh, but um, I think I totally agree with everything what you say but um, in the last uh, month and years in the community it's really um, um difficult for me to know i'm the self or to to yeah to know i'm the self and not to step in all my issues you know um that's really a great thing for me <laughs> well i i would suggest it's a great thing for you that you're getting into mm -hmm. all your issues you yeah see? because um it's not a, it's not enough to have a spontaneous moment which might yeah yeah go it might go on for some weeks even but unless yeah. mm -hmm. unless these inner uh, structures of the mind have been resolved they yeah. will inevitably sabotage us yeah, yeah. i can remember mm -hmm. in in maybe in the in the 6 months or a year before you came to the community you also had another kind of a yeah. week and that yeah. you Yes. In a very good mm -hmm. mood, and you've probably had the idea that if yeah. I come to the community, that will uh, support it, and that will, you know, keep Continue. me up. And yeah, yeah. And then you came to the community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then somebody mm -hmm. said something to you, you know, maybe an innocent yeah. remark, and this immediately they they don't know this when they give you the remark, maybe, but this uh, this remark mm -hmm. immediately puts you into some kind of old horror story yeah yeah that's right and so yeah. that's, that's the life of the community you see but yeah mm -hmm. um i mean the, the fact is that if you really want the whole thing to go on for years and not just be a glimpse then yeah. we need to work on these things and let them go because for sure they sabotage for sure mm. they so that the more things that <clears throat> get touched by the people around you um, the more mm -hmm. you'll be able to see them and they will be able to melt away and and once yeah. you have this mm -hmm. glimpse and you have the capacity to be in the self even if you're not totally realized but you, you it's possible to to um, bring yourself to what doesn't change yeah. then you're much more confident to deal with these things, which in a way sometimes can feel um, a little bit unpleasant, yeah. a little bit yeah. not what yeah. you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Is Aditi in the meeting tonight? So I was told Aditi had an example of that today where somebody made a comment to her and this touched something inside her mind. And she was pretty upset. And then she thought, oh, well, I, I, I should leave now. I won't stay for the retreat. I should leave, you see. But this is this is uh, this would, would have been a wrong idea, Aditi, if you're there, because um, it's very good to get these things. They're not pleasant always. Maybe they put you in touch with some structure which you would rather not be in touch with. But if it's happening, then it has to happen. Okay, is Aditi there? Let's have a look. Thank you very much, Lakshmi. Do we have Aditi? No, she's not here. I think. Oh, she is here. Yeah, Aditi, you like to talk to me? Yes, yeah. Yeah, you know. Uh... Ich bin heute mit einem ganz alten Schmerz in Berührung gekommen, mit einem starken Schmerz. 
Und ja, auch mit der Struktur an sich weglaufen zu wollen. I came in contact with a very old pain and with a structure to want to run away. Right. Right. Und für mich war es in dem Moment, ich bin raus ans Meer, die Weide und dann dieser Zufall, in dem Moment saß Indira dort. Und so first I went out to the sea uh, to get some sort of wideness and then there was this accident that uh, I came back and Indira was sitting there. Dass ich mich mit den Schmerz zeigen konnte. Also ich musste es nicht mehr nach innen verstecken. So, and I could show myself with the pain. I didn't need to hide it inside. Right, right. Und so this was a very good experience, Aditi. Ja, das war doch eine sehr gute Erfahrung, Aditi. Das was? Das war doch eine sehr gute Erfahrung für dich. Ja. It, it wasn't com comfortable. Es war nicht angenehm. Nein. Maybe it was a little bit unpleasant. Vielleicht war es sogar ein bisschen unangenehm. Ja, sehr. <lacht> <lacht> But... very, mu very much. Right, right. Very much. <lacht> so, but the, the, the innocent words spoken by somebody to you um, were not meant in any way to cause you pain and unhappiness, of course. Ja, aber das, was dieser zu dir gesagt hat, das, der wollte dir ja nicht wehtun, auf keinen Fall. Da war aber ein Punkt, der bei mir wehtat. Also so eine innere Verletzung nach, die ja zu mir gehörte. Yes, but there was sort of an inner hurt. Yeah, but it's not to do with the person who, who spoke something to you. The hurt is inside of you, of course. Aber der Schmerz, der ist ja in dir. Der hat ja nichts mit der Person zu tun, die was zu dir gesagt hat. Ja, aber in mir. Ja. Um, Und, yes. I mean, would, would you like to share about it or uh, you prefer not? Ja, möchtest du da... Vielleicht was ein bisschen mehr zu sagen oder, oder nicht? Das ist schwierig zu sagen, aber in der Meditation jetzt eben kam eine starke Traurigkeit, auch ein Gefühl von Wertlosigkeit. Und es liefen unheimlich ja, Tränen. Yes, it's difficult to say something, but in the meditation we just did, uh, there came um, a big sadness and a feeling of not having any value and there were also tears. Right, right. Und nachdem du gesagt hast, tiefe schauen, ich habe mich dann ohne es weg und plötzlich wurde es ja dunkel, still, aber es war so friedlich. And when you said look deeper, I didn't want to push it away, but I came deeper to some dark place and it was very peaceful. And it feels like if, as if something fell away. Right, right. That, that's exactly what happens because when you when you can accept and see clearly the old structures and you've already attained, I mean, you've definitely obtained the ability to stay with what never changes. And therefore it's possible for you that these things, when they're clearly seen, fall away, melt away. Yeah, das ist ja das, was geschieht. Du hast ja ganz eindeutig den Kontakt zu dem, was sich nie verändert. Und wenn du dann ganz klar die Sachen erkennen kannst, die Strukturen, dann können sie wegfallen. I remember when I first met you, you were telling me about your, um, how can I say, it was, I think it was near Christmas time or it was near your birthday, I can't remember. And you, you wondered if you would get any attention from your son. 
Ich okay. erinnere mich, als wir uns das erste Mal begegnet sind, da war das irgendwie um Weihnachten oder dein Geburtstag und du hast dich gefragt, ob deine Söhne daran denken würden. And then, ja. if I remember, he showed up with some flowers for you or something nice and you were a bit surprised how it all went very well. Und dann erinnere ich mich, dass die irgendwie kamen mit Blumen und du warst ganz überrascht, dass die ja, dich so äh, an dich gedacht haben und alles ging sehr gut. So it's, it's, it's a, often a little bit painful to see these things, but it's, uh, it's in the end, it's, uh, it's a process that everybody who sincerely wants to come to be free We all have to go through that. Everybody has to go through it. Ja, manchmal ist das etwas schmerzvoll, dieser Prozess, aber jeder, der wirklich ernsthaft frei werden will, der muss da durchgehen. Yeah. Okay, somebody else? Ja. Yeah. Noch jemand? If you if you like, you just wave your hand and I'll see your hand. I think Mahima was waving her hand. Shall we invite Mahima? I don't quite know if she had her hand waving, but it doesn't matter. Are you there, Mahima? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, and see you as well. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. <laughs> glimpse as you uh, read the quotation it was not the last one was it i don't i don't remember but um, i could relate to this quotation which uh, says mm, okay maybe the story behind it's it's a bit it's a little bit easier Mm, two weeks ago, I went to Kurt with my sister. You went to where? To a Kurt. Kurt. Okay, I had a Kurt case. Oh, court, court case. case. Court, court case. Court yeah. Case. Oh, yeah. We we court we, we did a lot of that. Yeah, much. <laughs> you went to court. Yeah. Yeah, to court. And my sister, um, she was the one who had a, a problem with another with a man. Right. And um, I don't, maybe I can tell it in, in German. In okay. Viva. Okay. I tell it in German. It's, it's better. Um, meine Schwester hat uh, jemanden angeklagt wegen uh, Übergriff. My sister Und accused somebody because of, uh, uh, well, an abuse. Yeah. And um, it was her ex-boyfriend. Das war ihr ehemaliger Freund. It was her, her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend, yeah. yeah. And um, just one week before the, uh, the date of the court case, um, I was um, on the phone with her and I asked what's going on and, and she said, oh, I'm, I'm not in a good mood. There's this court case. And I said, well, I don't know anything about it. Why did you say anything? And um, she said, yeah, I have trauma of, uh, because of that. I'm in therapy and so on. And I knew immediately in this moment, okay, this is the phone call and I have to go to court. Right. And yeah, so I went there two weeks ago with her. And um, there was also another woman, a friend of her. She was with her as well. And um, I was just sitting in the back and um, I was just there. There was no feeling about anything. Right. There was no feeling about, I had no opinion about the sayings of, of her ex-boyfriend or what the Richter, was heißt the Richter? Judge. What the judge said or anything. Right. And af after this uh, um, meeting there, my sister asked, and uh, what do you think about my ex-boyfriend? What did he say? He was just lying all the time. Lying? Right. Yeah. 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 And um, 
I could say anything about it. It was that I don't, ha I, I didn't have any opinion about anything anymore. I was right. just there and I could see on an energetic way, there was a kind of harmony between everything after this date. And I had just to stay there and there was not any task just to be there and have no judgment at all. So this right. was very, very beautiful. Yeah, this is the quotation from the third Zen patriarch of China. Yeah. 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 So when, and then when... I left. <laughs> I said, okay, my task is done. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> yeah. It was a special day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And very mm -hmm. often by my own experience, when you when you are in that space very strongly, then things happen that you can't really imagine or plan to happen. They they just uh, unusual things happen, mm -hmm. you could say. And um, they can sometimes be very miraculous things as well. And I've, I've actually been living this for getting on for 30 years now. And, uh, you know, all my, all my books where I went to interview teachers, they were very much good examples of that because I didn't have really a big plan and uh, I would show up and then blah, blah, blah. And then we'd have two hours together and it would be always very deep and very lovely. And with many of the masters, I could go and visit them again, even several times. And um, <clears throat> just just wonderful things happened. And, and I think those books about European masters and uh, Indian masters they are very wonderful books, actually, and wonderful films. And this was coming to me when, when I was having breakfast one day in Lucknow, just sitting by myself uh, having breakfast. And probably it was a day when I decided not to go to satsang. I just enjoyed my breakfast too much. I used to have a little dog. I used to play with my little dog. And then uh, I probably sometimes got so comfortable I wouldn't go to the meeting because... Uh, going to the meeting was always a hassle because you had to deal with all the other people. You know? So I would be happy to stay by myself at home. And then I got a message one morning that I should go and film the Indian masters before they pass away. And it took about another 10 years before I activated that. I almost forgot about it. But then a, a friend I met in Australia encouraged me to... to continue but um and then when i came to to india i was on my way from india to back to europe and then something happened and i spontaneously decided to stay one year in india on the way back and that's when these meetings started hmm. so when when, you, when i look back on my life i see so many things in the last 30 years if not in my whole life have just happened because they were somehow meant to happen. Like sitting here tonight in Spain in this beautiful house, this house we have in Denia came to us in, in a completely uh, unplanned way. Even I wasn't so interested to come to Spain. I, I, I came here for one student and uh, that student asked me one day, well, what do you need to, what do I have to do to get you to come to Spain? I said, well, we would need a house. So she then found this house uh, about 10 years ago. So just to see how things, you know, they unfold by themselves. And when you see so many things in your life unfolding by themselves, then it, you can just be very touched. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else like to <clears throat> share about uh, what we're talking about? <clears throat> okay, so I think I've got one more. One, one second, I must turn the light on.
So I've got a, a final quotation here from Ma Soris. The waves fall upon the shore and they leave behind a pool that is the mind. When the waves dash back upon the shore, where is the pool? The pool is submerged into the ocean. That is what happens. There is nothing separate. Self is everything. The world and you and me, it is everything. <clears throat> I can't quite remember how I got in touch with Marsoris because she wasn't a very active teacher. She hadn't got really much reputation, but I think somebody, um, some acquaintance told me I should go and see her. By then she was quite old and she had a very tiny little ashram. I got to sleep on the concrete floor on a piece of newspaper. So it wasn't a very comfortable stay. And each morning I would like to go quite early in the morning, I would go to where she would be sitting and she would have maybe 10 small pots, flower pots. And she'd have a, a bundle of flowers that somebody picked from the garden. And she would be choosing the, <clears throat> the uh, flower arrangements to put in these small pots and they would go around the ashram on the, on the puja table or some such thing. And I, I got so touched to, to watch this lady who was, she must have been quite old and she was not in very good health. But when she did this uh, action with the flowers in the morning, she would just be sitting alone. I'd come and sit in the same room and watching her doing this was so beautiful. I, I, I can't really explain it. It's just, I don't know, something was transformed because clearly this was kind of like a prayer for her. It was a sort of prayer doing these flowers every morning. And so the energy that came from this, this, uh, this lady, I remember once she took me in her car down to the, I think we went down to the sea actually, and and um, after we came back, um, we were talking and suddenly she told me, you know, sometimes I can be very naughty. I can be very naughty. And of course, I couldn't really imagine what this lady could have been naughty doing. You know, she wasn't, uh, it wasn't obvious that she could be too naughty. And then she told me, you know, sometimes I carry on singing in the car. That was her naughty. I carry on singing in the, in the car. So um, she was amazingly sweet. And her father had been a, a well-known person. I've forgotten for what. And he had introduced her to um, uh, Ramana Mahashi. So when she was a teenager, she, she got to meet Ramana Mahashi through... Uh, her father, but I think she never met him. I'm not quite sure about this now. I think she never actually met him in person, but she she met him on a deep energy connection level. And, um, and certainly something had happened to her. And she was a completely unknown um, person who would become self-realized. I'm talking here about myself. I had a head full of ideas about what it would be like when this shift happened. But when it happened, I discovered that it was very simple and very ordinary. In one way, it is ordinary. And yet in, in another way, it is extraordinary. A lot like those Zen stories about carrying water and chopping wood. However, in my case, it's about tapping a computer 
and carrying my iPhone. <clears throat> So um, yeah, so this is the this is the moment when something is clearly seen. Then there is a huge shift that happens by itself. And over the course of having meetings now for about thirty years, I met many people, if you like, from the ordinary society who had such a glimpse, had such a, a shift of their reality. And unfortunately, uh, several of these people that I met didn't have any contact with um, a spiritual teacher. And many of them even became afra afraid uh, because they couldn't really understand what was going on. And they felt themselves very different. And maybe they didn't really, uh, they weren't really able to allow this maybe very beautiful feeling because it was too strange. And then they wanted in some way to, they wanted to take it away, this strange feeling. And sometimes if you're really alone, I've met people where, you know, in a way it was very scary. Maybe they might have had ideas about. Uh, needing to go to a mental hospital or something. So then very often people repress the feelings they, they have and don't realize how beautiful it is and how special it is, even if it's in one way ordinary. In another way, it's definitely extraordinary. But it can be very scary. It can also be scary. So maybe somebody would like to share about it being unexpected and maybe a little bit scary when you had a glimpse. I think most of you on the screen tonight have had a glimpse, at least a glimpse. <clears throat> Kashi. After my first glimpse, um, there was a period that I had a lot of fears coming up. Um, yeah, really, uh, and I, I later I, I got all a very busy mind and and very very lot of straight yeah fears. Um, yeah, I also in my body something went open as if the box of pandora or something uh kind of but i could not really see what old stuff it all was but there was a lot of fear and now yeah okay i it, it it closed again and much later i had also yeah, kind of glimpse or that i was a long time very easily going in a deep silence and very grounded and feeling a space field of peace of silence of i felt also i was a lot of sitting for ramana also for also was a presence in my house but as if there were um what is it? Um, I remember that I was on the street and I think a little mental man came to me and said, "May," because he acted some strange. And I said, I have to call with the Bardo. Can you give me your phone? And then I felt a little bit scared. When should I do it? I gave him my phone and he called with the Bardo. And I don't know. But then i noticed i had also a kind of picture or an expectation it, that i would never be scared again when i'm in that when i'm there and that i was scared and i was still were the moments that i did not know how to how to really handle or something so i had also kind of expectations or about 
I, I think it's easy yeah. to have expectations, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, in my own case, you know, I was doing spiritual practice for 15 years um, before I met Papaji. And, you know, it, it, it was all, there was always a sense that, you know, if I do the kind of meditations that I've been suggested, if I do what my teacher has suggested, then at some point, you know, I will get this thing called in, in those days enlightenment. And um, it may maybe that there was a benefit, of course, because over these 15 years, I had gone through many, many changes. But um, the, the, the reality that comes from Ramana is that we're always complete. We're always the self. We can only be the self. But that means that there is never ever that my idea was then there is never ever mere any doubts and you know immediately what you have to do right and that is not true or is that true um well it depends on the level of realization i think you know if yeah. you're if you're prepared if your energy system is prepared if the body is prepared and if you've done enough work to take away um, old structures, um, if then everything is ready, it's like, uh, you know, and then, of course, uh, I don't think you lose it again because yeah. everything has been prepared. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. it's not consistent, then mm -hmm. it suggests that there are some kind of structures which still need to be seen and to be let go of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think everybody who knows you would tell you that for you, one of your strongest ones is that you never give yourself time to not work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I met you yesterday, I was saying you, you must go for a swim. Did you go for a swim? Yesterday I went to the sea, but today I did not. No, yesterday I don't like swimming so much, but I went to the sea and make a walk to the sea. <laughs> Well, that was good yesterday, but, okay. but today, I, today I was again so caught up with everything. You're, you're one of the people in our community who works too much, and yeah. uh, and that this creates something which uh, you need to deal with. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Many yeah. people have tried to help you with that, but you don't want to be helped with that. I, I'm very yeah. Sometimes I don't even see it today. I was thinking, oh, I have to take the sheets there and 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 get uh, pillowcases, and then Hannah said to me, "I can take them for you," and then I think, oh yeah, but it was totally not in my mind, you know, it's in my mind that I, oh, I have to bring that. So um, yeah, it is really uh, yeah. I'm quite stubborn in it. But this this suggests a strong structure. Yeah, I don't know yeah. whether it suggests the former. Maybe it's not a trauma in your case, but there is a strong structure where you always feel that you know you're a, a bit better girl if you do something. If you if you're constantly busy with doing things and you're doing it yourself, that then that's giving you the best credit. Maybe when you were a little girl or something. I I don't know. I I don't know your issues so well actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean certainly that's one that many different people have told me that it makes it sometimes difficult for them to relate to you because mm -hmm. you're so so busy rushing around with sheets and pillowcases that you know nobody can say hi to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. You know. So, I mean, it's been pointed out that as you're looking after the guest house, it's nice if the guest can occasionally meet you and you're not just rushing past, you know, on some mm -hmm. very urgent uh, uh, task. You know? yeah. No, I have the feeling that, uh, that, that I can take time for the guests, but perhaps not enough for my fellow men. <laughs> And for yourself last, of course. For myself at last, yes. Yes, yes, yes residents yes. and then yourself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm on the last place. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. maybe you had too many priests in your family. And so this idea of kind of sacrificing myself, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But mm -hmm. uh, but you you have something very sincere, Kashi, and you, you clearly had some good experiences. So then you want it. You want it all the time, I think. You can have it all the time, but you just need to melt away certain old structures which still in a way are are holding you you can say yeah but sometimes i find it so dim because then they say you have to let go and then the first thing is like, how 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 do i let it go not immediately by every thought think oh don't go into me don't grab it or uh, well you know so it is so easy so in, your, in your in your case don't even think about letting go okay right. so what you have to to see is this structure of never stopping to work how you mm -hmm. do it to a point where it's too much you know mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. it was the same with Pavati when we first when she first came to into the community we had to kind of ro rope her up to the kitchen chair so she couldn't do anything for a bit <sighs> Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good, good. Thank you. <clears throat> so maybe it's enough for tonight. Anybody else like to share something about their awakening, their glimpse of awakening? Oh, Hannah, she's in the dark, but okay. Hello. Um, yeah, so for me, the the big shift and in the second vipassana and it was after being with the monk and meditating with the monk on my own and after that i sat down and it was like something pushing me out and i didn't i didn't have a clue at the moment what it was and i didn't understand it my mind couldn't grasp it so it created a story that I went out of my body and it felt, yeah, it felt like I'm twisted, but I sat straight. So it was, yeah, it, it, I was, I was so, uh, yeah. And I, I realized in the moment when it happened, there was, I just knew inside I need to accept it. I didn't have fear. It was just, okay. I, I let go of it and then it yeah it went out and it stayed like this for a long long time for some days and and the night I was sleeping I felt like I'm I moved up like the body's laying but there's something more a little bit higher and so <laughs> and I was so confused because I couldn't speak I also cried <laughs> um, because not out of fear, not out of happiness. I don't know that, where the tears were coming from. Um, I think it, it's quite a powerful energy, actually, yeah. especially the first time. Yes. You know, when somebody gets a series of glimpses, very often the first time it happens is, is much stronger than later. Yes, that's the first one. You're you're coming from the mind, and suddenly no mind. So this is very strong, um, very strong, different feeling, you know. But once you, if you like, open the door a bit, then opening it a bit more isn't such a big deal anymore. Yeah, and now it feels really normal and nothing special. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I, I was confused <laughs> what happened. <laughs> right, right. But you had the monk to talk to or? 
yeah so the the lady I, I went to her and told her that and she didn't even listen to me and she didn't want to hear my mind so I didn't feel satisfied with something so I was somehow really not happy with it and then I was allowed to talk to the male monk because a male was with me so yeah. I talked to him too and he told me something it's just a distraction and I should just focus on meditation and it's something like a like on the road and it's far but you know you should keep going and um, yeah right. Right. and after that I wanted to be in this all the time so I had a lot of attachments to being in the state and this was yeah. when did, what you're describing happened how long ago a couple of years ago or much yeah. longer two two years maybe two years ago and a half yeah. uh -huh. yeah. okay very good Okay, so I think uh, we'll uh, stop there. <clears throat> so most of you are going to be appearing tomorrow night. <clears throat> We're going to start the uh, retreat tomorrow evening. I think most of you are going to be there. There's two or three from Atma and uh, Nasharaj, Shiva. Right, oh. she was there before. She's gone. Pavati. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, brother is there. Yeah. Okay, so thank you.